Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Landtronics, maker of the X Print server. Print from your iPad, iPhone, or any iOS device to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the coupon code twit to receive free shipping on your order. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 16 of i5 for the iPhone. Every week we cover five topics from the newest apps to utterly helpful tips and tricks, and of course, the week's iPhone news. I'm your host, Sarah Lane, and I've got great stuff for you. So, let's rock. Number one. So last week I showed you how to create and order a photo book in about five minutes using an app called Mosaic. Well, as promised, it's here. A reminder, it's 20 photos for $20, and Mosaic promises to arrive in four days. I ordered mine on a Sunday. It arrived on a Thursday, so they kept their promise. So let's take a look at the finished product. First thought, it's a little smaller than I thought it would be, but definitely feels solid, has a nice canvas shell, and the Mosaic on the cover looks really good. We can open it up and get a better look and then flip through our photos. Paper's nice, paper's nice and thick. Photos look great. Although, in my example, I have a few photos that could have benefited from captions. Like, if I gave this as a gift to the boyfriend, he's probably not going to remember that this was a picture of Carcassonne, or I could maybe make a funny joke about the weird lunch that we had there. So captions would be a nice addition, at least as an option. I guess if you have good penmanship, you could write something and make it more personal. I also kind of wish I wasn't limited to just 20 photos once I got going, I wanted to make a really big photo book, but I do think that Mosaic is smart to do this. With a quick selection process and a four-day turnaround time, the photo book can truly be an impulse gift. So think about it. It's the holidays, right? You've got five friends or maybe relatives that you have to shop for. So everybody gets a photo book, you write something nice on the inside cover, and you have a thoughtful gift that you spent very little effort on. Number two. So this old MacBook Air of mine, circa 2010, is very much on the fritz. I'm thinking about getting a new one, but how much do I have to spend? I don't, I don't, I don't want to look it up. I don't know off the top of my head. What am I going to do? Oh, I know. Let's ask Siri. How much is a new MacBook Air? Let's go check out the Apple Store. Hey, look at that. Siri now directs Apple product questions right to the Apple Store app. That's handy, except it doesn't work that well. I can search for iPad mini prices. What's the price of an iPad mini? Okay, let's check that out at the Apple store. But I can't just speak the product name? iPad mini. Sarah, I don't understand. iPad mini. I mean, how can you, how can you not? Ugh. Siri. Here's something to look forward to, though, with Siri. iOS 6.1 beta is now out to developers, and one of the cool new features to look forward to is the ability to buy movie tickets through Siri. So soon you can ask for tickets for a certain movie, and based on where you are, theaters and showtimes will show up. You pick which movie you want, you buy your tickets, and then you'll be routed to the Fandango app to finish your purchase. But here's where they lose me. I have no problem with Fandango, but my favorite theater where I see most of my movies, the Kabuki in San Francisco, happens to not be a Fandango partner. Boo, heartbreaker. So this is gonna be great for those of you who either already use the Fandango app and love it, or you go to theaters that work with Fandango. It's definitely a cool partnership for Apple, for sure. Now before we move on, speaking of cool partnerships, just want to make sure you know that Apple's partnership with OpenTable can really come in handy when you're using Siri. Make me a reservation at Central Market at 8 p.m. Okay, Central Market has tables for two at 8 p.m. As well as Apple's partnership with Yelp. Old Chicago Pizza. Here are three places fairly close to you. 
You probably already knew all of this, but just in case you didn't, just a little duh tip from me to you. Number three, the folks at Tumblr have been busy. Not only have they just released a fully native version of their iPhone app, but they've also launched a standalone photo app. So let's start with the main one. Not only is it now completely native, which means it loads really fast compared to the previous version, but it also has a spiffy new notification preview page, so I know which of my posts got liked or commented on or reblogged. I like the little design extras like dragging your finger across an animated GIF. Yes, I know some people say GIF, I say GIF, deal with it. So you can see a frame by frame type thing or swiping up on the post button to pull up a camera really quick. That's nice too. Obviously you have to be a Tumblr user in order for this app to be of any use to you. But if you are, I guarantee you'll love the changes. I also mentioned that Tumblr has a standalone photo app, which is also great. It's called Photo Set, and it's designed to upload and share a group of photos. So basically I choose my photos, like uh, say my favorite photos over the last month or so. I give the set a caption and location if I want, and then either upload the set to my Tumblr account or if I don't have a Tumblr account or for whatever reason just don't want to share them there, I upload to Photo Set. On Photo Set, each set gets assigned a permalink page where the photos live. I can email that link, I could tweet it, I could just copy the link and distribute it some other way, and then anyone viewing those photos can click or arrow key to flip through them or swipe if they're on an iPhone. So why would the Tumblr team build an app like this that doesn't require a Tumblr account? Is it because they figure that the option will lead to more Tumblr account signups? Or just a better sense that the focus on photos is very important to Tumblr going forward? My money's on the latter. Number four, got an email from Lainey Lemons. And by the way, if that's really your name, that's a great name. She writes, when I sync my iPhone 5, the capacity bar shows that I have anywhere from 0.67 to over two gigabytes of other. How can I find out what this is and how can I lower that amount since I only have a 16 gigabyte phone? Sometimes if I restart the phone or the computer, it shows less other, but not all the time. I've gone through and emptied all the caches and unselected various apps, music, podcasts, videos, but none of this has permanently decreased other. Help, I need more free space on the iPhone so I can download all previous episodes of i5 for the iPhone. Well, that is a good reason indeed, Lainey. Okay, so this other sort of business refers to things like system software, contacts, messages data, settings, pre-installed apps, that kind of stuff. So you're never going to be able to wipe out other completely. But it also sounds like some of your problems aren't unique to you. Apple support message boards are full of this exact complaint. And it does sound like what's working for a lot of folks is to connect your iPhone to your computer, launch iTunes, force restart your iPhone by holding down the power and home button at the same time, and then letting your phone cycle through power on again. If that doesn't work, you might be looking at a full restore of your iPhone, but you'll need some, some time, set aside a little time for that, and definitely back up your phone first. Good luck, Ms. Lemons. We'd like to take a moment to thank Landtronics, maker of the Xprint server, for sponsoring this episode. I cannot tell you how many times I've emailed files and documents to myself from my iPhone to another computer. Why? Because I couldn't print from my phone. Ah, so frustrating, right? But you don't have to be frustrated. Xprint Server enables wireless printing from your iPad, your iPhone, or your iPod Touch. No apps, no software to install, and best of all, it works with the USB or network printer you already use. You open it up, you plug it in, and you print. Home Edition is $99, supports up to eight USB and two network printers. For unlimited network printers, you'll want the Network Edition for $149. It's perfect for a home or office. You've got printers, you've got iOS devices, and from now on, they're compatible. Go to xprintserver.com slash twit for more information and to buy. We've got a special offer for you, too. Use the coupon code TWIT to receive free shipping on your order. Remember, visit xprintserver.com slash twit, and at checkout, enter the coupon code twit. Number five, finally, let's end on a ridiculous note. Charles suggested an app called Face Bomb, and I like to check out apps that you all suggest, so I downloaded it for 99 cents. The point is to horrify everyone you know by putting someone's face on another person's body. And it's great for group photos where everybody's looking at the camera. As long as Facebomb recognizes at least two faces, you are good to go. 
For example, I could become Amber MacArthur, or she could become me. You could resize, tilt, flip, move any face so that it looks as realistic as possible. But obviously the point is to make everybody laugh, not to actually convince them that humans are cloning themselves. Some photos work better than others, as you can see, depending on how well Facebook detects the edge of faces. And it will annoy you by asking you to download its sister app, FaceSwap, which isn't free either, so that's dumb, but it's a reality. In closing, Facebomb is very silly and borderline pointless, but it did make me laugh a lot, so I'm okay paying a dollar for it. And maybe it'll liven up your next family photo at Thanksgiving. Holiday cheer, everybody. Just spreading a little holiday cheer. And that's it for this episode of i5 for the iPhone. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. For links to everything that we talk about or to subscribe to the show totally free, catch up on episodes 1 through 15. They're all very good. Just visit us at twit.tv slash i5. If you know an app junkie or just somebody who needs iPhone tips, you can send them our way. They might like the show too. Email us your deepest, darkest secrets at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you next week.